Hi everybody. So this post is going to be uniquely hard for me. This video is about my brother Lonnie who died November the 30th, 2007. And I wrote a post about him on my blog a while back and I promised everybody closer to his death date that I would read it on a video. And I'm pretty good about keeping my promises. And I've been thinking about him for the past couple of days and it's been rough. Um, let me tell you a little bit about my brother before I read this because otherwise you're not going to really know how much I miss him. He was a lot like me. You know, making fun of things in light of serious situations because that's how he dealt with life. And he had it pretty rough. But he always did try. You know, we always screw up. So many of us fuck up in life and then realize, you know, hey, it's time to change. <clears throat> you know, he, uh, he was in the 82nd Airborne. He was an amazing, sweet, kind-hearted person with a rough, you know, a rough exterior. He should be here. He was 38. My dad was 38 when he died. And I've got two more years. You know, so I, I'm working on myself the best I can. And if you're not interested in watching me boohoo and read something that's going to make me almost quasi hysterical, this would be a good time to switch off to puppies and kittens. So I will leave a link to puppies and kittens down at the bottom of this video. So you are more than welcome just to click on the bottom of this video and go and see something that's not horrifically painful for me. And I do this because I need this. And I want people to know how much he meant to me. And I want his memory to live on forever. And I want to share him with others. I want to share this wonderful, sweet human being that is no longer here anymore. He was amazing. He was amazing. You know, he never cared how much I weighed. He never cared what kind of stupid shit that I've done in my life. He always just would hug me and tell me it was going to be okay. You know, it was almost like having a second dad. So he was a big rough teddy bear. I'm trying to figure out why this... Hold on. There we go. He was a big rough teddy bear and he liked people to call him Tex, which I never did. Because I thought that was dumb. <laughs> uh, he had a daughter. Her name is Jade and his wife and everything like that. And he, towards the end of his life, was very heavy and had a diabetes. Um, you know, being incredibly heavy kind of runs in the family. Like, really runs in the family. My mother, you know, has had gastric bypass and so have I. And my brother Sean deals with weight issues. And a number of the other family members we have have either had gastric bypass, getting gastric bypass, or, you know, are working on their weight as well. So our family um, has issues with weight, definitely. And Lonnie, unfortunately, did not live in a time where he could get that easily. Because if he had gastric bypass, he'd be here. And I know that. I know that if he would have had weight loss surgery, he would be here with us right now. And he died in his sleep. He died in his sleep of a massive heart attack. And he was fucking epic. He was epic. He was, I can't even tell you what an amazing person he is, was. You know. I'm going to read this. Puppies and kittens. Down at the bottom. I promised I would do it. I love you, bro. I'm sorry about my nose being all grody. Yesterday was hard. 
Wait, that is an understatement. It wasn't just hard, it was downright painful. Yesterday I spent a good portion of time talking to my mother. We laughed and cried and reminisced about the day when my father and brother were with us. When we were a completed family. Thinking about the used to be's and always, is always hard. But to see the pain etched on her face every time a flitter of memory flows through her mind is painful. Never ending pain that will never get better. It'll never stop hurting. It'll never feel okay. I remember it as if it was yesterday. I talked to you on the phone. Asking you how you're doing. How you were feeling. You told me you would come down with a cold. But how could I have known? How could have anyone have understood that in that few short precious days you would stop breathing forever? That you would pass in your sleep? That at 38 years old I would need to worry about you somehow not being there? I remember as if it was yesterday you hugging me goodbye when you dropped me off in Kingsport, Tennessee to make my new life. I remember having to use a walkie-talkie on the ride up the mountain as I followed closely behind you. Your sleep apnea is so bad you would constantly fall asleep at the wheel. And how I was terrified about you having to make the trek back to North Carolina by yourself. You had a daughter and a wife waiting for you at home. I remember as if it was yesterday your voice in my ear telling me you loved me, Punky, and that we would see each other soon. I never got that chance. Life turned its course and you're gone. A small glimmer, a blink of an eye, and you're missing from existence. I know you're watching. Everybody says that. Everyone wants to feel better at the thought that their loved ones are watching us. Yet I don't always feel that way. Heaven, or whatever form of it there is, is where you are no longer bothered with the physical realm. It is so perfect and beautiful that you are completely at rest. I know that you're waiting on the other side with Daddy and Nanny and Poppy until we can all be together someday. But today I feel myself ache for you. I woke up thinking of your laughter in my dreams. I woke up wanting to call you so badly I searched for your number on my phone and then I realized it's been many years since your number was on my phone. I felt that hollow emptiness that haunts me. That deep throb of where my brother used to be. You were my protector and my confidant. You were the one person I could run to with anything and never worried about a glimmer of judgment. You were imperfect too. God, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. I wish I knew then all the things I know now. I wish I could have gotten you gastric bypass. I wish I could have helped motivate you to change, to take better care of yourself, to learn when to stop. Learn when to rest when you needed it and learn when to put the fork down. I wish to God I could have saved you and kept you here with us so that you wouldn't have to see the pain in my mother's face when she remembers you somberly that she buried her firstborn. That I, would, I wouldn't have to tell everybody that I only have one brother, not two. That you were supposed to threaten Matthew for me and tell him that if he ever hurt me, what you would do. You were supposed to walk me down the aisle because Daddy left us too. You were supposed to do so many great and wonderful things with your life, but food and drugs and simple neglect took you from us all. All. I love you forever and I will see you again I will see you again I will love you <laughs>